Now, uh, finally, time for our rural spotlight, uh, which I love, as you know. Um, uh, now, here's uh, one that I wasn't quite expecting to utter, but I will utter it with uh, uh, great interest. I hope you share it. Uh, populations of red squirrels have declined over the last 150 years, rather than seeing their uh, auburn bushy tails, us Brits, uh, now have become more familiar with their grey uh, counterparts. I, however, recall, recall as a child living uh, in Scotland, just outside St Andrews, relishing watching a red squirrel who seemed to live in an old tree uh, in our front uh, garden. Absolutely beautiful and such a character. Well, I'm delighted to be joined now to discuss uh, this further uh, by the director of UK Squirrel Accord, Kay Hoare. There she is. Kay, good of you to join us. Um, how did the decline in red squirrels come about uh, and the supremacy of the far less impressive grey variant? Uh, so grey squirrels were brought over from North America from about 1876 and introduced to areas of England and Ireland. Um, and once they established and took hold, they started out competing uh, red squirrels, sadly, for food and habitat. They're much larger, they're more aggressive, um, and they also carry a disease called squirrel pox, which they only carry, but which the uh, red squirrel contracts and which is almost always fatal. So over time, they've just pushed them out through competition and disease. An evolutionary thing. This isn't just survival of the fittest. Uh, the, 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 we tinkered with the balance between red and grey and, and we got it wrong to the cost of the red squirrel. Yes, that's right. Yes. I mean, uh, if it hadn't been for human actions and what we have done as humans is moved a, a huge numbers of species around the world. Some of these species aren't able to survive in the habitats in the, which they're introduced. Uh, some of them live in, in perfect harmony with the native species, but there are about 10 to 15 percent of species that when introduced to a new area have no control mechanism, no disease that controls them, no predators. And so they're the, the ones that we call invasive species and they're the ones that we have have to tackle because at a global level and a national level, they're one of the biggest threats to biodiversity. Yeah. Um, well, I'm all for it, as I said, from my childhood memories of the lovely red squirry, squirrel up in Scotland. Um, uh, tell me this, because uh, we, we, we've done the return of beavers to, uh, uh, to the countryside on the programme, and I know there's a bit of a tiff with the NFU over that, uh, and there was another case of it quite recently. Does this lovely creature, the red squirrel, bring something unique to the ecosystem to our balance uh, or is he, are he and she just lovely things to look at? So, uh, uh, red uh, well, red squirrels, squirrels are really important for natural woodland regeneration. They bury nuts uh, and they help the regrowth of, of, of trees through through forgetting often where, where they've stashed them, um, acorns, etc. Um, but unfortunately, what the grey squirrel does, it is bark stripping um, young broadleaf trees. And this is especially uh, a problem at a time when the UK, along with many other countries around the world, want to plant more trees for the many ecosystem service benefits they provide. In fact, it, there's an estimate, which is thought to be an underestimate, but that uh, grey squirrels cost the UK economy around £37 million a year in lost trees, damage to trees, cost to the timber industry and the reduction of carbon sequestration, which, which race, red squirrels just don't do.